first line of this poem creates an air of fatality that is continued throughout. Owen uses irony to great effect by adopting the tone of the Beatitudes of St. Matthew's Gospel, but in reverse. He states that it is blessed to have qualities that are the very opposite of those Christ praised, and shows that in war they are of great benefit. This stresses the total distortion of war, of the good and bad aspects of life. Those lucky in the circumstances are the hard-hearted, those whose imagination have never been active or have been dulled by war. In the poem, Owen considers various categories of these people. Section 1 deals with the soldiers who have suffered so much that they can no longer fear for their fellows, not even for their dead comrades. They have become so deadened to normal feeling that they can walk uncaringly on alleys cobbled with their brothers. But the dead are men, not flowers, for a poet's tearful fooling. As a poet, Owen was doing what he could, but inevitably his work must sometimes have appeared to him as pointless, mere tearful fooling. Section 2 deals with those who have lost any feelings for themselves as well as for others. They feel no anxiety in their position because they have resigned themselves to fate. Dullness best solves the tease and doubt of shelling. Section 3 deals with those who have lost their powers of imagination to the point where their reaction towards the sight of blood has become cold and dead. Imagination, Owen says ironically, is better left behind. It is a burden to be carried like a heavy pack. The continual sight of blood diminishes the effect it might once have had. Similarly, once real terror has constricted the heart, it never again expands to its full emotional awareness. Once the senses have been seared, a callousness and cauterization, literally meaning hardening of the skin into calluses, follows. Section 4 deals first with those who have been sent home wounded or on leave and can forget, and then with those whose minds have not been trained to think ahead. The latter sing as they march and are contrasted with those who march taciturn, because they know there is no escape from the terror of war. Section 5 deals with we wise, the poets, who have been trained and whose imaginations fill with blood every time they think. How should they approach their task of writing poetry? They must imitate the insensibility of the common soldier and keep their imaginations under control. Only thus can they write about their subject without relapsing into nightmare and mental chaos. Section 6 deals with Owen's final category of insensible people, the dullards, who have never experienced battle and safe and unconcerned, feel nothing for the suffering of soldiers. For this callousness, there can be no excuse. These people have made themselves immune by choice, not only to the miseries of war, but also to all that is tragic in the human condition. They can never know real human contact or share in the deepest human emotions. Their hard-heartedness excludes them from the eternal reciprocity of tears. <laughs>